recording, recording. I just keep it out here and I look at the time. All right. James, last name? Whistler. Whistler, that's a cool name. Was that from Shines a is a cool name too. Was I that was from gonna... a movie, Whistler? No, there's, you know, you ever heard of the famous painting Whistler's Mother by a guy named James Whistler also, you know. Um, but it's it's a uh, not a very common name, but like I was going to ask you about your name, Shines. Is that your real name? Because I've never <laughs> heard anybody with their last name Shines. All right, let's let's get started. Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is Coffee with Jesus with James Whistler, which is a really cool name. Original name. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't change my name or anything. That's my <laughs> that's my born name. All right, come and join us. Hi, James. Hi, Jeremy. I, this is the second time we met. Um, well, we met each other on passing in Battle Mountain. Mm -hmm. You're from Battle Mountain. Not born here, but have lived here most of my life. I thought you were born here. Where born were you in born? Santa Ana, California. Oh. Four years old, my family moved uh, back here. My mom was born here, so we had roots here. And we came back, my dad came back to start a mechanic shop and uh, start his own business and everything. And so from that point on, I've been here pretty much most of my life, except a few years, you know, college and, uh, you know, in Vegas and things like that. But And so you look like older than me. And what keeps you in Battle Mountain? Um, probably right now, just my, my roots, family and friends here. Uh, you know, because to be honest, there are other places in the world that I think are more, more beautiful, of course. You know, I love the trees, love the lakes, love wildlife, mm. uh, mountains. We do have mountains, so I mean, that's like one of the biggest pluses to me around here, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen mountains like this. There's yeah. just some amazing mountains they're, they're, here. They're amazing, huh? Yeah. 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 And if for me, let's get right to it. It's a challenge to be here, to be in Battle Mountain. It is and it is and it isn't. Um... You, you have to adapt to it if you're not used to it, for mm -hmm. one, okay? Um, and it's like a lot of places, I know it's so cliche, but they say it is what you make what of you it. What you make of yeah. it, yeah. And so, you know, if uh, one guy said, if life hands you lemons, you make beer. <laughs> so <you're>, okay, <laughs> whatever. You know, I never make, heard that word. No, no, I, that's why I had to use that one. <laughs> make the best of it, you know, uh, of what you've got. A lot of people are here uh, for the same reason I am, uh, long historical roots. Uh, others are here for the work, you know, mm -hmm. good paying mining jobs and things like that. You mm -hmm. know, you know, they're here. Others are here because they like the desert mm -hmm. and others are even here because they like small communities, mm -hmm. you know. So it, my pluses for Battle Mountain is, yeah, it's small. Uh, it doesn't have the same drama that the large cities do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that is. We haven't had a riot. We had no, no riots, <laughs> nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, those are those are nice pluses. And now I'm starting to see that because of what's going on, unfortunately. <laughs> mm. So. And hopefully, God willing, we don't have that kind of drama brought right, to right. us. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's great, and I I like that about it so far. We could just get our stuff and just come right back to silence. Yeah. So, we're here to talk about God and Jesus and. Uh, and some uh, deeper theology, not the basics, right? Right. So, go, yeah, go for it. All right. Well, I mean, I don't want to lead the conversation, but we talked before about um, what I would say is, you know, getting into serious issues about Bible prophecy, about the church and the church's duty in this hour, mm -hmm. the church's calling in this hour. Uh, I would say now just as much or even more than any other time, we need to make our voices heard even though it's even getting more difficult um, to be an influence in the world to be working towards the Great Commission to be seeking and helping save that which was lost to show the world that what the redeemed are mm. that there is uh, a plan of salvation that there is a hope and um, you know not isolating ourselves from the problems of the world and like we were talking about being in a small town you're not in the midst of you know people tearing down statues and setting things on fire but we can still be an influence in in the world so we need to you know more cliche in the world but not of the world uh -huh. 
you know. And I'm going to take the uh, judge advocate seat. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Is and say, what do you mean by salvation, and why do why do I need Jesus? Okay, good questions. First of all, because you know we we base everything on the Bible. You know, we base everything on God's word. Everybody who, uh, given the opportunity, is going to find you know apart from God's word is going to find a belief system that they're comfortable with. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for something that the flesh is okay with. And so they'll go into false religions, they'll go into atheism, they'll go into agnosticism where they just sort of put themselves in neutral their whole lives. And say, I don't know if there's a God and maybe I don't really want to know. Maybe it's just, you know, not my interest. And so um, that's unfortunately uh, our, our default position is to find what's comfortable for us. And so to get to the Bible and get to the message, it's not a truth that we really want to hear at first, right? It's not something that are that is pleasing to us because our pride is challenged when you're told, hey, the reality is that you are a sinner. Whether you tell somebody that or you help them realize it themselves, I'm, I'm an advocate of the second position where you actually, you know, if you've ever heard of Ray Comfort's ministry, you you get the person to admit it themselves just by asking them questions, mm -hmm. you know, have you ever told a lie? Mm -hmm. And then they say, yeah, well, what does that make you? And then they say, uh, a sinner, you know, was one of the first ones. Or, and then you get them, no, press them even further, a liar. Nobody wants to call themselves a liar, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you know, have you ever stolen anything? Yeah, even if it's something small. Nobody wants to call themselves a thief. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? We don't want to tell the truth about ourselves. That's why... That's why it's our job to help other people realize this because they're not going to realize it on their own. God is right. using us for that call. You made a very interesting, um, you brought up an interesting topic, a few of them actually. One of them was, um, was about the Jews. There was the problems with the, it was the Rome or the Greeks mm -hmm. and the problem with the Jews. Mm -hmm. The Jews didn't believe because they didn't see a sign mm -hmm. and the Greeks didn't believe because they weren't intellectually pleased. Right, right. And that's another way that man is looking for um, validation uh, of his own preconceived notions through different ways. The Jews were, you know, like Christ said, you, you know, you seek a sign, you're not going to get any sign other than like what happened to the prophet Jonah for him. And he was Jesus referring to his death and resurrection. And Paul said, you know, the Jews are seeking after a sign and the Greeks are seeking after wisdom. And that's basically you're appealing to somebody's senses with the sign. They want their five senses to be, uh, you know, placated by something that's out of the ordinary. Prove who you are. Even though Jesus did do miracles and everything, it wasn't good enough for them. But prove who you are with signs, you know. Mm -hmm. The truth wasn't good enough for them. Mm -hmm. And the and the Greeks had to be argued in through philosophy. They loved just, uh, they were very wordy, very verbose, and they just prided themselves on their own rational ability to come to the truth using their own human wisdom. Human wisdom, of course, in the fall was corrupted, so it can never come to the truth on its own. Mm -hmm. And that's what I say, and that's why you've got to bring the gospel to them and that's the only way they're going to see that they are a sinner, mm -hmm. that God is a just God, a righteous God. He will judge them, as he promised Acts 17, 30, 31, on Judgment Day. Uh, and that there's only one way of escape of eternal damnation, and that is through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you know. And that is, there's no more important message out there to mm -hmm. give to people, you know. So there's this thing called um, universalism, mm -hmm. right? Your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth. Mm -hmm. How would you take that apart? How would you prove that your truth is the only truth? Well, you, you know, I mean, I suppose you have to ask them some questions and say, how did you derive at your truth? And then you get them, you see, you challenge them on their own abilities. So they say, well, I use human reason. Like I said, the Greeks use human reason. So, okay, so I, I rationalize, I use my own mind. The atheists like to say, we're free from mind control. We have our own mind. Say, okay. Have you gotten 100% on every test you ever took? Do you remember everybody's name when you hear it? Do you remember phone numbers? Do you ever get anything wrong, you know? Did you marry the right person? Did you, you know? Um, and when they say, well, yeah, of course I've made mistakes, you know, well, then uh, your your reasoning isn't perfect, is it? <laughs> so why are you trusting it for you for your own right. salvation here? Right, right. 
Same with the senses. You say so the, you can't trust yourself. Is, you can't yeah. trust yourself right. on on deriving the truth. You know, the heart is wicked and deceitful. Uh-huh. We're do the is this okay? okay. <laughs> you yeah. want to do it? We can do the umbrella too <laughs> if it gets bad enough. The heart is deceitful. So, you know, we're, we're totally dependent upon the word. Thank God that he provided it for us so that it's a mirror for us to see ourselves. Now, this is like what I'm saying. This is the gospel message. This is the... The basic message that the world needs to hear, even in a time like this. Say you have somebody saved, you've led them to Christ, and now they look around at the the way the state of the world now, and they have no idea what direction to jump. Okay, we as believers, I think, should be uh, honest with the state of the world and say that it's never been like this before it's spiraling downhill faster than than we can even keep track of and uh obviously our our faith and hope has to be in christ but uh you know this is where i wanted to bring in you know the deeper studies of things that a lot of churches a lot of christians don't they don't like talking about because you bring up the word conspiracy for one and that's almost like uh in a holy water to a vampire or something they don't want to talk about conspiracies um you know but i think that there's nothing wrong with christians dealing with them christians being you know forewarned is forearmed you know be wise as serpents uh there's nothing wrong with knowing the plans of the enemy and so we're seeing these plans being played out now and, and i'm not introducing anything new when i say that this is the new world order being implemented many many people out there are, are talking about this and have and i myself and many have been warning for many years that this was going to come and lo and behold here it is and so okay now jack you find yourself in this situation what do you do well like i was saying number one we as believers need to trust god in in all that we see no matter how bad it is and say the only solution to the new world order which is the um the enemies of christ that is their final plan here the only solution is jesus christ is the return of jesus christ to this earth so we are to occupy until he comes um we can be salt and light in our world in our local communities um in whatever ways we can he is responsible though for um cleaning up the earth so to speak for the judgment that's coming he is the one that is responsible for that he is the one that's going to protect us in the in the coming days ahead and so if we try to use our own wisdom again rather than the word of god we're going to go astray on uh the big plan so basically what i'm saying is christians shouldn't be looking for ways to take over the government or something like that Mm. uh or or forcefully stopping through uh force of arms you know uh um you know the wickedness that is going on now defend yourselves is fine i you know i believe in that christian's right to defend himself and and his family and his loved ones and and, and his property and whatnot but we are by nature supposed to be in the second birth uh, you know, children of peace, peacemakers, those who, you know, uh, want to bring peace and reconciliation to the world. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be challenging. Um, but that, that is our calling. And so, you know, not deny the seriousness of the times, but also not deny the sovereignty of God in all of this and that Christ is the one who is going to uh, come and uh, judge the wicked and reward the righteous and you know he is our redeemer the, the blessed hope the second coming is what we're waiting for uh and we need not be deceived in this hour many false prophets are gone out into the world and they want to uh, get us off the rails and like we were talking about uh dispensationalism on the last uh, mm-hmm. our discussion and how actually you know uh, they're part of the body of Christ, people who believe in the preacher of rapture, believe in dispensationalism. I'm not questioning anybody's salvation here, not at all, not, 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 not one bit. But I am saying that these doctrines, holding to these doctrines, are uh, going to be detrimental to a believer in the coming days. They are going to make it even not, only, not, not less difficult, but more difficult to hold on to and maintain uh their their faith in god because many of them will will i think actually believe that christ abandoned them and 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 maybe even lied to them although christ according to the scriptures that i read i never find anywhere where he promised to take the church up out of the world before 
uh, the end times before the serious persecution comes. And so um, we only have ourselves to blame if we choose to uh, believe doctrines that are tickling the ears and, and um, promise us uh, an escape. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, there's many things we could say about the preacher of rapture, but it's, it's time to get serious with where we really are uh, in the, in the uh, prophetic timeline mm -hmm. and, and acknowledge it and say, uh, okay, by God's grace, I'm I'm here. We're here for the duration, and that means that if I don't, if I'm not prepared at all, then uh, I've got to trust God for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if I mean, let's let's be frank. If the grocery stores run out of food, I've got to trust God for my food. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if there's roving bands of, of of hoodlums out there causing mayhem and and serious violence, even death, I've got to I've got to trust. God for my safety. I can I can have self defense and whatnot, but ultimately He is the one who is going to mm. to bring me through all this. Mm. And so you know, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying is that we we have to just be real mm. in this late hour. We are the generation that God has decreed, has chosen to be mm. uh, His representatives to the world in this time. There's, you know, I would say other than the the time of Christ being on the earth and His resurrection, there was there's probably been no more exciting time to be on the earth as as a believer even even the protestant reformation will not be as uh, volatile as exciting as challenging mm -hmm. as today mm -hmm. you know we have many many uh false teachings out there that are uh you know like i said you don't want to be repetitious but you have uh, uh, lots of false prophets on tv that are that are guiding us in the wrong direction prosperity teachers uh uh, you know, um, emergent church, emergent Christianity, which just borrows the name of Christianity, but has nothing to do with Christianity. Mm -hmm. uh, diversions; those are you know, side roads that are that are that are getting us distracted. Um, we should be focusing on seeing the the body, the bride of Christ, growing. That's mm -hmm. what God is waiting for before He comes back. He has His church that He has chosen. To be saved, that he is, you know, he is using us as his mouthpiece, as his hands and feet to go reach the lost. If you want Jesus to come back sooner, you should be evangelizing. I mean, that's my opinion. You shouldn't be sending money to Jerusalem to have a temple built, uh, you sh uh, to have Jews brought back to Israel. Uh, you should be evangelizing. That's God's time. Clock. He did not come to. He came to save this world from this world he didn't come to save this world for this world like we think with our five senses mm -hmm. right we yeah. think that oh we just need to all come together and we just need to fix this but this world has already been judged it's already been condemned jesus didn't come to fix this world that's a good way that's he, an excellent way you you you've said something i'm dancing around and you just brought it right out uh, you know, to borrow from the Old Testament, said we would have healed Babylon, but Babylon is not healed. Babylon cannot be redeemed. It cannot be healed. The world system is on its way to hell. It's on its way to, to damnation, and we cannot turn it around. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's I, a burning building. Yeah, we're yeah. we're just trying to get rescue the people the, out. Rescue the people that are in there to get them out. Absolutely, mm -hmm. we we uh and if the more we acknowledge that the more we won't waste resources right. and 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 get caught up emotionally and mm -hmm. uh as we see it getting worse and worse we we say yeah this is sad you know the, the world's gone more to, over to satan but knowing the end picture that you know uh looking at revelation saying that you know it is like you said it is he's already judged it you know mm -hmm. and so he's now carrying out the judgment and this is just the temporal judgment before you know all the wicked are thrown into the lake of fire but this let's be honest as christians and say that when we see devastation even when we see starvation and things like that in the world and 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 there's natural cataclysms too you know you've got famines and stuff going on and earthquakes all that kind of stuff uh, god is judging the world but he's also at the same time saying wake up wake up repent and turn to me you know the time is getting shorter and shorter all the time mm -hmm. Grace is um, provided now, but eventually it will, it's, it'll be taken away. Yeah. Um, those who will be saved will be saved, and those who weren't made their choice, right? The hardened the hard heart will, will be allowed to just keep getting harder and harder, if you will. 
yeah it's like we did discuss this before uh, my perspective on the book of revelation is called the all millennial perspective i've looked at all the perspectives and to me this one made the most sense because it was scripture interpreting scripture scripture translating scripture and using consistency in it saying okay god gave us a symbolic book and when we start trying to literalize it wherever we feel like it, we well, I want that to be literal. I want the temple to be literal. Right. You know, then we get into trouble with our interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. And so I want the two witnesses to be literal. Mm -hmm. We're going to get in trouble with it. I want the three and a half years and the three and a half days and the thousand years. And I want it all to be literal. You're going, you're, it's like you've got the wrong treasure map to the wrong place mm -hmm. for, the, for the treasure. Mm -hmm. And so when we were talking about the two witnesses... Uh, as all millennials believe that these represent the church you know you have the Jewish uh, contingency and you have the Gentiles uh, who are you know uh, candlesticks these are the ones standing before the throne of God these are the the, the lights that he gave to the world the witnesses you know and that's what they were they were two witnesses that's what we are witnesses and martyrs the same word uh, for to the world and we're allowed to do that for this symbolic three and a half year period which as i say is is the time christ left to the time he returns and so we are granted that satan cannot stop us from from the gospel advancing now he can in certain areas of certain times but overall christ's word still goes forth mm -hmm. up until that time though when you when you uh, see that the two witnesses die and as as i, I was explaining before that is the silencing of the voice of the church in the world we are we've lost our footing on the in the in the public square we will not get to go out and evangelize it will anything like that well then it'll just be so suppressed that it will be very very difficult to share our faith so you know like they say make hay when the sun is shining evangelize while the door is open that's why we do need to be busy mm -hmm. because that time period is, is coming mm -hmm. and we can see it as as it's more and more censorship happens online on the social media and stuff like that where your christian values are are being challenged but challenged and and uh identified as uh hateful bigoted uh, even even hate speech even trying they're going to criminalize it in some some places they already do criminalize it speaking out against homosexuality in some states and things like that huh. are are criminal you know and so even even the, the core gospel will be uh, criminalized mm -hmm. and so you know that's what i'm saying we've got is... it taken out of the school districts sure they're trying to take it out of the government yeah. and you brought up an interesting point is this like this one world religion mm -hmm. is coming in and we have the kingdom of god and we have the kingdom of satan mm -hmm. the kingdom of satan is these physical bodies because they're tainted with sin mm -hmm. that's his kingdom and that's what he entertains but the kingdom of god yeah. Yeah. is a spiritual kingdom and both kingdoms will live forever, but one will be in, in eternal pain and suffering, and the other will be in eternal glory and glory and bliss with Christ. Right. And the, yeah, the, the kingdom of heaven, like we were saying, like you brought up our last discussion, is this with, it is within you. So where you want to know where the church is alive today? It's wherever the believers are and wherever they are practicing their faith. You know, mm -hmm. wherever they are gathering and, and taking their communion, and where they are evangelizing, whether mm -hmm. they are praying together. That's the, the church on this earth. It's not at the Vatican. It, it's not at, at, a, at a temple. It's not at any uni universities. It's not at seminaries. It, and I've had that. I've had so the kingdom of God is being challenged. I would work at a place or I would be somewhere and 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 people would say or ask me, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. And I would say, because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. They're like, well, I'm not going to say anything if you don't. I'm like. Well, he sees me, mm -hmm. and I know him who sees me. Yeah. Even though I'm not held accountable by anyone that sees me in this world, I may get away with it. I'm not going to get away with it from him. Yeah. You know. So when when we stand up for truth, and we don't participate in these actions because no one sees us, we know who the one who does see us, exactly. and that is a testimony, and that's a witness to them that God is real. Yeah. And they. And, and and of our faith yeah they see they see uh christ realized in our actions even when you know uh i, I preached a sermon one time where i talked about christians reviving the first law of the ten commandments because the world doesn't see that so much they can see there's something wrong in the, in the things of the second table the second table has you know don't commit adultery don't steal don't kill 
and they say yeah yeah i see that's wrong because that's i can see that you know something happening to me like that and that affects me in a negative way and so that's wrong but when you also say you know don't take the lord's name in vain and you say no idolatry and you say remember the sabbath uh they're like yeah that's not so important to me how does that affect me so we can help bring that back by the, our faithfulness they they're seeing us you know and we say okay and people disagree on how taking the lord's name in vain you know how that is has done and it's like okay so if you hear somebody saying gd or whatever in a movie or something you say i'm sorry i, got, I gotta walk out uh you've made a testimony right there mm. you know um or if there's somebody just saying um you know god says this and god says that and you know that god didn't say that then you challenge them on it you're mm -hmm. you're making a testimony right there mm -hmm. um or when you're going to church and you're honoring the sabbath you're making you know you're you're bring, like i said bringing that first table of the law back to life and then they they do see christ living within you mm -hmm. and and it, you know how serious you are yes. about what you believe because a lot of people believe in things but then they take a break from it, mm -hmm. right? They relax the law or they relax it for a bit. They go, oh, it's not mm -hmm. that serious. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it's not of that much importance. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife were talking about today, just values. Mm -hmm. Our beliefs and our values are so all over the place. Yeah. You know, the first commandment, you know, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yeah. When you wake up every day, what do you do? You know, and then all the other laws. And you could bring up, you know, as, as some people have made this analogy, and I believe it's a, a valid one, that you can make um, sports, even the, you know, right. you, can, you can make that an idol. You can make right. that your god. You can you can worship athletes, or, or you can devote so much time. Right. I mean, that's what your where, where your worship is, where you devote your time and your energy. You brought up a really good point about idolatry, about worshiping sports. Mm -hmm. One of uh, the pastor. He said, you, I've, I've known people who worship the Marine Corps. That's an interesting one, yeah. I've, awesome. I've heard people worshiping their, all the terrible things that happened to them. And here's a, here's a struggling one is, is Christianity. Now, I, I know. We can even cool. worship our Christianity. Okay. We can worship the, uh, this image that we have of ourselves that we, that we, you know what I mean? Is that, it like a self-righteous yeah, way? Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We can worship that. And it's all out of balance. It's all taking things and right. putting them of a greater importance than, then, they, than they should be right. and putting God down lower importance right. than where he should be. Right. And as Christians, uh, you know, if, 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 we, if unbelievers see us watch a movie that, you know, is, let's just say there's language, nudity, and that kind of stuff, and we shouldn't be watching it, that's a poor testimony for them to see or even listening to music that is vulgar or or you know uh immoral you know whatever uh that's a poor testimony for them to to see for us and so you know we do need to purify our lives to to practice what we preach you know walk the talk and so now why not you know as good a time as any you know it, departing yeah. from the world departing yeah. from babylon yeah. let's let's make a clean break here it, um the pastor preached on that when um, the pastor, the pastor, the pastor, whoever's preaching God's word, right? So the uh, pastor at the First Baptist, he said this. He said, it was interesting when Moses was exiting from Egypt with all the Israelites mm -hmm. or Jews. And Satan was like, Satan was, was represented by Pharaoh. And he says, okay, you can leave, but... But keep your keep your 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 land or your your herds. The animals have the to, stay. to stay. And then he kept making like he kept trying to um, keep his hand in, in Israel's pocket, you know. And sure, God sure. was like, "No, they're going to make a clean break yeah, yeah. away from anything that has to do with idolatry." And great God's analogy. Eyes. And and yeah. and Egypt in the in the Book of Revelation is a form of the world, and that's what it represents. And so. Us being, you know, brought out of Egypt while the plagues are going on is a very, an apt uh, analogy of, mm. of us leaving Babylon today, mm. uh, di divorcing ourselves from the ungodly, the sinful things of the world. Mm. You know, Paul says it. Mm. Paul says, um, "For by grace you've been saved." But what is grace? Grace is you don't deserve mercy, mm -hmm. but I provide mercy. Learn your lesson and don't do it again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So God is divorcing us from our sinful behavior. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
And and so are we saved when we're participating in those sinful behaviors again? No. Uh, the analogy that I would use is if you're drowning in water mm -hmm. and someone comes by with a lifeboat mm -hmm. and they pull you out of the water, you're saved. Yeah. You jump back in the water, you're not saved again. Yeah. Well, I'd say it's a complicated issue on mm. that because you do have people who have times of backsliding. Right, right. Now, that doesn't mean that they've denied their faith. It right. means they're overtaken by, by sins of the flesh. But mm. if you were to challenge them, and this is the way I look at it, if you were to challenge them, though, you know, right there to, to their face, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Well, they would not deny Christ. Mm. They would say, yes, I'm a Christian. And then the conviction would be there. Yes, I'm carrying out sins that I shouldn't be and that's that's in their mind mm -hmm. but they they will not deny Christ because uh, he has not let go of them right okay. Right, right okay so now if they deny Christ though and you know say they did went to church with you for a while and they you, you thought they were Christian you thought they had a credible profession of faith the next thing you know you're you're seeing them in the bars all the time picking mm -hmm. up on other people's wives or, or whatever just gambling away all their money and they're mm -hmm. just not they don't want to go to church they don't read their Bibles or anything like that and you're going I don't know if this person's a believer or not. So you just, I'm just going to come right out and ask you, are, <laughs> are you still saved? Do you believe Jesus died for your sins? You know, mm -hmm. um, and they say, nah, I, I don't believe that anymore. Well, then they're, then they're not. Mm -hmm. They're not a Christian. But, you you know, it's a perfect opportunity to challenge them so that maybe you can get them back on the right path. And they go, oh, yeah, I, I know Jesus is real and I know that he died for my sins. Mm -hmm. And then maybe they're like, Maybe I need to get out of this bar now mm -hmm. and get back on my knees and doing the things that I'm Paul supposed says to. rescuing those, bringing those back to faith. Yeah, rescuing the perishing and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, this, we're in, we're, you know, in the spiritual kingdom. Mm -hmm. We are in this physical world for now. We share this world with the unbeliever for now. Mm -hmm. But after that is eternal separation from them. Mm -hmm. And so we need to have our, our, our eyes heavenward. Mm -hmm. uh, rewards, you know, even now we should not be pursuing great wealth, great estates or anything like that, you know. Mm -hmm. You'd think that the, the state of the world now would be a discouragement for Christians anyway, mm -hmm. saying, what do you want to go try to build some great, you know, big empire, your own personal empire, mm -hmm. when you see that uh, things are, are, are crumbling around you. The economy, the, the, the downward slide of the economy is just beginning. It is going to get worse and worse and worse. All of the nations of the world are uh, systematically destroying their own currencies by printing more and more and more. There's there's no good way out of this. Okay, mm -hmm. you know it's like you're watching a, a movie and you're saying, okay, well uh, things just keep getting worse and worse and worse, <laughs> and uh, there's no possible uh, barring miracles from God. There's no possible happy ending to this movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's that's what we have is we have the script, you know, we have revelation, we have the script and mm -hmm. we're saying, okay, there's there's no possible ending to that is good mm -hmm. to this. So let's not e even now uh, succumb to any temptation to seeking our, like I said, our own building more barns, you know, so we can store more of our own, uh, you know, possessions and um, we're we're borrowing this place. We're just passing through. Pilgrims. It's good, 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 good way to put it. Yeah, we're, we're passing through. You know, we're not, miss, this isn't our eternal home. Mm -hmm. You know, let's not uh, waste all our efforts on that. Right. And it's, it's, it's like, um, I can't think of the analogy, but uh, I don't have one, but I was trying to come up with one. <laughs> but it's just passing through. Tell who you can tell and move on yeah they don't listen move on yeah don't waste your time you know there's a lot of i feel like there's a lot of i don't know them but i know the bible talks about a lot of christians who try to save their loved ones and they're probably not going to be saved so they spend time wasting time trying to convince this maybe, person. maybe maybe extra extra time that could be better spent elsewhere yeah that's that's mm -hmm. a judgment call in people's lives and you know you, you can't tell them stop or whatever. Just the Holy Spirit's got to convict them. Mm -hmm. But it, but that spurred me on to another point, though, too, is that uh, as people are, uh, you know, God love them, uh, the, the Trump supporters who are, think that there's a political solution to this, who are, you know, 
gonna gonna vote for Trump in 2020 and they think that somehow he's going to stem the tide of, of what's happening mm -hmm. uh, I mean I, I hate to break it to them but this this is all an agenda and Trump is part of it mm -hmm. you know people don't want to hear that Christians don't want to hear that for some reason they still want to cling to some sort of mm -hmm. physical solution to the problems of this world and that's what I've said at the beginning of this mm -hmm. No, our solution is the return of the Lord Christ. Jesus Christ. Our, Christ. Yeah. The point that me and my wife, again, were talking about was actually something that I've learned. And it was Satan wants us to keep. How do you like most games? It's with the ball, mm -hmm. softball, football, baseball. Keep your eye on the ball. Yeah. That's yeah. the that's the that's the game plan yeah, keep yeah, your eye yeah. on the ball Don't they always tell you that how do you say, win yeah. the team that wins they kept their eye on the ball and they had the most control over the ball yeah right yeah satan wants us to be distracted so we don't keep our eye on the ball yeah right yeah and i like to say everything that's happening in the physical first has to happen in the spiritual okay we are seeing spiritual we are seeing the effects the cause is the spiritual the effects is happening in the physical sure. right okay the kingdom of satan is the spirit the physical it already happened mm -hmm. right it's happening in the spiritual first we're not fighting against each other we're yeah, not fighting right. against whatever we're f physically seeing yeah I, see, I, I would kind of i would phrase it a little differently right. but similar is that the, the physical is greatly influenced by the spiritual, and the spiritual mm -hmm. does come through first, and good mm -hmm. examples of that, like you say, Satan's kingdom, uh, they initiate plans to demoralize a society, mm -hmm. long-term plans. Mm -hmm. And so his human agents, his human servants will say, okay, uh, we're gonna start just slipping a little bit of uh, risque scenes in movies, and then we're gonna make a little more risque, and then the next thing you know, we're gonna have love scenes in there that are very, very, uh, you know, graphic, and then we're and we're gonna slip more profanity in there too, a mm -hmm. little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, until it becomes so commonplace that it's the society is desensitized to it. Mm -hmm. I had a, a a friend who online he analyzed uh, movies. Of, of using profanity in there and he, he mostly used where like they would take the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in vain or they would say GD or something like that and he he made this chart of movies over the years where they would gradually increase using these blasphemies mm -hmm. in the movies until mm -hmm. you know they're just so common that people don't even bat an eye mm -hmm. And then you go, well, this is just quite a progression. It almost looks like it was planned. And you're like, mm -hmm. of course it was planned. Mm -hmm. This was in the spiritual first. This was what they said. We're going to lead this culture astray. It doesn't matter what, you know, entertainment, music, education, politics even. Mm -hmm. uh, his, his, his kingdom has been working to mm -hmm. demoralize society. Look where we are now where you have cross-dressing 11 year olds on tv and and they're praised as being brave and strong and courageous and and uh, you have transgenderism now where they're they're the heroes of the day and the homosexuals are, are are courageous and everything but a moral godly husband father man the family is considered mm -hmm. you know wonderful and to be put on a pedestal mm -hmm. that didn't happen by chance and it didn't happen overnight mm -hmm. and that is i see it kind of what you're saying is in this the spiritual kingdom with their plan passing it on to the human agents working it uh, patiently very mm -hmm. patiently into mm -hmm. society we're we are i i love this concept where where we have satan being tempted or satan jesus being tempted by satan mm -hmm. right when he comes to the earth mm -hmm. we see the fall of man mm -hmm. in the genesis of that temptation yeah and then we see god yeah. in the flesh being tempted with that same temptation yeah overcoming the temptation and the temptation is I will I will give you everything I will give you my entire kingdom. Now there's two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. There's there's God's actual kingdom mm -hmm. and then there's Satan's kingdom. Yeah. And we see that that temptation is is Jesus says he says you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Sure. And then and then Satan is saying the same thing. Yeah. I will, he's entertaining the physical. Mm -hmm. Right? That's his kingdom. Yeah. And then and and Jesus is denying the physical. Yeah. For, yeah, for what is greater, yeah. and we are on that. We are either we either are on 
we either are serving one of the two. We're in one of the two kingdoms. Right. Absolutely. And and another a clarification on what you're saying is at that time Jesus said or Satan said the kingdoms of this world are mine. Mm -hmm. And what he has been doing is been consolidating them into one kingdom. Now he has the kingdoms of this world. These people, the politicians, they're so the bankers are sold, sold out to out. him. Right. All of these, you know, leaders for you know for uh you know, lack of a better way of saying it, are pretty much predominantly sold out to him. Mm. Okay, they're they're um, in love with the plan. Okay, so he's consolidating power, bringing all these kingdoms together to one kingdom. This is his moment in the sun. This is his shining, you know, hour before, because he knows his time is short, before it all comes crashing down on him. So he's uh you know reveling in it and so are his servants as they're they're seeing all these things and they're helping make all these things happen it's interesting because in in satan was in heaven and he was kicked out mm -hmm. and that temptation scene is if you're not for satan then you will be kicked out of his kingdom we see this backwardsness yeah. from heaven the, from heaven and from satan's kingdom yeah and Satan's kingdom, his servants are sold out for the, the pleasures of the flesh, you know. Like Christ said, what is it profit of man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Very sage advice, don't be seeking, but they have not listened, you know. And this could get into a long discussion, so I'll just try to summarize it. The people who were behind this choose to remain in the shadows. So we know the names of some of the families, but many of the families we actually... The public, I'll say, does not know the names of them. They see the people on TV. They see Trump and Pelosi and Chucky Ducky Schumer and, you know, foreign uh, you know, dignitaries. And they say that these are the leaders of the world. When these are just, you know, Puppets. three or four ranks down mm -hmm. from the, the, the leaders of the world, the, the, mm -hmm. the true ones realize that power, Satan's kingdom is uh, through secrecy, darkness, and fear. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you don't know who the real enemy is, then you start pointing fingers at, at any old direction. And this mm -hmm. is what you know, works for them, mm -hmm. is that we're all distracted pointing the fingers at everything else mm -hmm. that is, you know, instead of where the, you know, the, the, real, true, the enemy true enemy is. Behind all the veils the, where, yeah. where Jesus saw through it. He never kept, he never took his eye off of Satan. Mm -hmm. He knew who he was judging. He knew who he was uh, in, in war with. Yeah. You know. And so these families are intergenerational, uh, Luciferian worshiping families who, uh, to, you know, it's, it's like you're inheriting a family business. Well, this is how these guys are. You're inheriting the, you, one of the sayings they call them as the custodians of the plan. Okay, so you're born into one of these families. You pretty much don't have a choice. You follow through with the whole New World Order agenda. And it's been an over 200 year long uh, plan. Started in, started in the same year, believe it or not, that the Declaration of Independence was, uh, was penned, 1776. And so, you know, everybody's seen the dollar bill. They've seen the pyramid on there. They've seen the eye in the middle, Lucifer. The, 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 the three sides represent the Rothschilds Family Tribunal. The bricks represent families and corporations and things like that. And it's all, it's all Saint, Satan's kingdom with, with him at the top. And they have been able to uh, gain this power so much through secrecy, through fear, uh, you know, and through dishonesty with with banking and politics and, and things like that and so you know it's almost like christ said you know render to caesar what caesar rendered to to god what is god's you know those federal reserve notes that they print that they and they put that on there as a talisman they believe it gives, gives them more power but that seal is basically there uh you know you're looking at the the core of what they're all about is is that capstone is placing satan uh, you know, like uh, all of the uh, power has come together into one, and he uh, rules through one man. Okay, and there's lots of different uh, philosophies out there about the Antichrist. You know, the man of sin, and and it does get complicated. But I can say this from my studies of Luciferians, based upon those who've come out of it, escapees from this satanic kingdom, mm. is that they. Uh, we're waiting, have been waiting for 
who they believe is the son of Lucifer. It, they really do believe that, that this man who's going to show up on the scene that they've been preparing the kingdom for. Mm -hmm. And they love him and they love Lucifer just as much as we love Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And just as much as we're looking for the return of Christ, they are looking for their Messiah. Mm -hmm. And so um, when all of these other things are being put into place, it can only mean that they found him. Okay, that he is alive today, that he is walks the world, mm -hmm. and that of course he's going to remain unknown to the public at large until the time comes to introduce him mm -hmm. in whatever way, whatever fashion they do. And so, to me, this is actually exciting too because we're like, okay, uh, it's like clicking a, a piece of the puzzle in place there, saying, all right, now the puzzle is almost finished. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, with the, the, the world leaders and the bankers and, and politicians doing what they're doing, um, we know we are getting close as much as it's going to be um, not a pleasant time on the earth. Uh, it should be exciting that we know that our redemption draws nigh as well. This, mm -hmm. this, this man of sin will, will come on the scene uh, and he will try to be the savior to everyone. Mm -hmm true Christians will deny him, will be the only ones to deny him, will be the only ones who will have any reason to reject him. Mm -hmm. And so this will, of course, mean... Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes, it will mean more persecution for us, purification too, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went mm -hmm. through. Um, but b be forewarned, be prepared that this is what is this is what is coming. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and be excited, and, you know, because, yeah. you know, Christ is coming, will be coming back soon. Mm -hmm. You know. And that's very interesting that you bring all that up it's like we know something's going on we don't really know how to identify yeah. these things you know and yeah. when we look at the bible when i look at it it's like revelation right now it's like i can like there pe there are people doing exactly what the bible say yeah there's yeah. there's all these we're at war between gods yeah. right from yeah. the beginning since the fall yeah satan wanted to be god yeah. Satan tempted people that they can become God. Absolutely, absolutely, and the, and the, and the followers, his followers, are, are of that belief, you know. And so, obviously, they're sold out to him, and they have no conscience or, or whatnot. So they don't care what happens to the people of the world. They want to see many of us uh, killed off because we're in getting their in way. their way. Yeah, yeah we're in their way. Uh, you know, we're polluting their earth, you know, something like that. <laughs> you know, we're breathing their air. You know. And so, you know, we must be we must be done away with, you know, as far as they're concerned. So, very, very and they do want to, uh, with all of the events that are going on in the world, they want to keep the confusion going so that nobody really can get their established to try to figure out what, what's going on, what's going to happen, where are we at? Is this going to turn around? Is the stock market going to come back? Are we going to get the jobs back? Uh, you know, are we going to be able to stop and turn the tide of this this liberal monster that is that has been unleashed upon society? You know, um, they don't they don't want anybody really uh, you know coming together on the same page and, and figuring this out, and, and because it makes their plan so much easier. And it's interesting because we were talking about how the COVID plays into keeping people separate from each other yeah. from i heard from laying hands on each other and uh divided mm -hmm. as far as like um when people come together people talk you know and then they get unified mm -hmm. and then they talk about ideas like this yeah. you know yeah. and then they figure it out yeah you know yeah whenever your enemy starts separating you and making it very difficult for you to congregate that's you can figure out that's what he's up to is mm -hmm. preventing you from being any kind of serious threat to him and it's just like uh, early on with this COVID uh, uh, crisis, the quarantine and stuff. Um, when they, when I saw how they were so determined to try to prevent the churches from meeting and stuff like that, uh, my eyes were really open to it being the spiritual battle. You know, not that I didn't know already, but it's like this is to me was like an obvious blow to the church. Mm -hmm. And I really applauded those churches that said God comes first. You know, mm -hmm. once they realized that the COVID was a was a was a nothing burger was basically hype mm -hmm. you know once they came to that conclusion by doing their own research not watching mainstream media uh and they said we're going to meet anyway you know god comes first 
I, you know, I was like, hats off to you guys. This is the way the church is. We're going to have to stand for our faith in ways mm-hmm. that, that we never had to before. Mm-hmm. You know, let's face it, this is new territory. So uh, get out there in the water. Guess what? It's it's time to get your feet wet and, mm-hmm. and, and practice civil disobedience. Just be sure that you're founded on the word of God. And you're saying, I'm standing up for what is right. And God did tell us meet together you you know honor the sabbath so Mm -hmm. he does come first now we can all put the state first and be like the cowards like with shadrach meshach and abednego and they bowed to the idol and they looked at shadrach and meshach and said what are you guys doing you know you guys are going to be in trouble just just bow to the idol and you'll be okay Mm -hmm. it's like we can't Mm -hmm. we can't bow to that idol Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. we've got to we've got to stand for our faith and so Mm -hmm. greater is he who lives in you than he that's in the world right and so that you know yep as the days come on we'll see more testing uh <laughs> testing, with, yeah. yeah testing trials with 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 that in mind that uh you know are you are you are you, are you in or yeah. are you out yeah yeah are right. you in or are you out yeah you have not there's a part in the bible i believe it says you have not suffered on anything until you've suffered martyrdom or hmm. perse- or like you know what i mean yeah i think it was maybe it was some theologian or something he said okay the true, a true witness is one who's been martyred. Yeah, that, that's, I suppose that's the greatest. Tortured and martyred, that's your greatest testimony to Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I suppose that's the fullest test of your, of your, of your faith. You know, it's just putting you right there. You put, put the fire under your feet and saying, are you going to say uncle or are you going to say, keep the fire going? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, that's what we can guess what believer that's what you can expect you know in the days ahead yeah i I think we can end on right there and uh i think that was really great all right and um we're we're definitely going to probably have another one of these sounds good yeah you gotta give me a lot of things to think about so awesome good well we appreciate you guys watching and uh keep on tuning in if you enjoy it and share share us and whatnot share uh disagreements share challenges because we threw a lot of uh concepts out there and obviously we didn't try to defend every single one against every single objection and so uh, i personally and i'm pretty sure jeremy would be the same way would would welcome challenges to anything uh, that we said and if we're wrong uh, you know i'd be happy to be corrected Uh, if not then we're happy to share why we believe what we believe and maybe we can convince you of uh, of the things that have been said here Mm -hmm. all right all right amen amen thank you